Hello, welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today, I'm going to show you how to make tamarind paste for cooking from a block of pulp like this. And I'll also show you how to process it so that you can make it in bulk and keep it in the fridge for months and months. So you only have to make this like once every six months or so. So if you've been following the show, Earlier, you would have noticed that I used to use uh, tamarind that comes in a tub like this, which is convenient and everything, and it's fine, but I'm moving away from that because I'm realizing now that the flavor and the acidity is a lot better when you do make it from pulp like this, and that's why I wanted to make this video to update the information for you. Um, I also want to point out that I do have a video all about the basics of tamarind, tamarind 101, everything you need to know. So if you've got more questions about tamarind, check out that video. I will link it in the description below. All right, let's get started. So for today, I'm only gonna make just half a block. You can do the whole thing if you want, but personally for me, half a block is fine. And this stuff lasts in the fridge like forever. So you don't have to worry about it going bad. Super simple, you wanna start by breaking this into sort of small chunks like this, so it takes less time to dissolve in the water. If you add the whole chunk in, like, it'll just take forever. And you could just use a knife to cut it into cubes, but I think it's actually easier like this and you can open up more surface area, make it soak even faster. Okay, so now that goes into a large bowl. Now to this, I'm just gonna add hot water and this water can be as hot, wow, can be as hot as you want. It can be off the boil, but it doesn't have to be. Pros and cons, the hotter it is, the longer you have to wait before you can start mashing it with your hand. But hot water will dissolve the tamarind more thoroughly. So don't go with like lukewarm tap water, things like that. That'll, that'll make it harder for you to mash it afterwards. So at this point, what I do is I just let it sit and just go do something else. Forget about it. Um, it'll take about 30 minutes before it's cool enough for me to stick my hands in there. So here's our tamarind after it's been sitting. It's kind of lukewarm right now. Yes, I know it does not look appealing, but this will pass, trust me. So uh, before I do anything, this is a lot more full than I had anticipated. So I'm just gonna move it into a bigger bowl so I can just like scrunch at it without worrying about spilling. All right, so now you are just gonna go in and massage the flesh off of the fibers that is in here. So there are no seeds in the pulp and the package will say seedless, but there are lots of fiber that is, that is covering the seeds. So you have to strain that out. And I'm only wearing gloves just, you know, for hygienic reasons, but if you wash your hands very well and you don't worry about tamarind in your nails, then you can do with bare hands. So yeah, you just wanna feel with your fingers that each seed fiber no longer has soft pulp on it and really take your time because you don't wanna waste anything here. And my tip is for this part, don't add too much water because if it's too runny, it's harder to find the stuff, like it's just kind of swimming around. So generally I do a half pound block for two cups of water, it works out pretty well. So that looks good. And now I'm gonna strain this into a pot because we're gonna cook it. I got a sieve here. Don't go with a super fine mesh sieve because this is quite thick and something super fine will make it harder. So this sieve is good, it's quite coarse. So all that goes in, mmm, delicious. And you're just gonna try to stir it and press it all into the pot. It's a little thick, so you really need to get in with your hands and help push it along. I just push all the fibers against the sieve. And then because I'm stingy, I'm going to rinse whatever's left here with a little more water because I want everything, gosh darn it. Okay, there we go. Really squeeze that through. Make sure you get everything off the bottom. And that is it. So now, this is good to use for cooking right away, but if you wanna keep it for a long time, you wanna cook this first, kill off all the bacteria and everything and it'll last a lot longer. So I'm just gonna bring this to a boil. And because it's so thick, I would keep stirring to prevent it from 
jumping and landing on your arm. That would not be pleasant. So now that it is boiling, ready for the cans. Okay. So I like to use mason jars because if you add a really hot thing to a mason jar, it creates a vacuum seal, so then it'll last longer. But you can use any container that you like, something that seals well. I'm generally pretty good at pouring, but you might want to use a funnel. This is the perfect thickness right here. If you're trying to sort of replicate the store-bought version, this is a great ratio. Oh, perfect. So this makes exactly two cups and a little bit. I have like a tablespoon left in here, um, which I will just turn into a drink after. Close that. Now, as you can see, I'm not going through the proper canning method. Like I'm not boiling these like you would a jar of jam. So I'm still going to keep this in the fridge. But if you want to go ahead and can them so that you can keep at room temperature for years and years, you can do that too. And that is it. Oh, you know what? Now that we're here, let me taste it. Mm. Oh, nice and sour and flavorful. Also, it's a good idea to taste it because different brands, different batches have slightly different acidity. So you might want to take that into consideration when you make a recipe. It's good to know where you're starting at, right? So this batch is very sour, more sour than my last batch. So I know that when I use it for cooking, I got to use a little bit less. So I hope that was helpful. If you got more questions about tamarind, don't forget to check out my tamarind 101 video. I'll link to it below. We cover a lot of things in that video. When you make this, I want to see a photo of it. Maybe you can use it as a Christmas gift for a Thai food loving friend. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an episode like this and click the bell icon as well so you get a notification when I post a new video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious time.